What's going on guys? It's me, Reiki's Talent, back with a new video. And today, I want to touch on a bit of a spicy topic, which is, uh, you know, um, cash shop in Pantheon Rise of the Fallen. Now, I, I really thought about it if I should make a video like this and encourage people to talk about it because, you know, it's going to be a spicy theme. You know, some people think, oh, yes. Some people think no. And some people quit the game if, if this is going to be in there. Some people think, oh, it's not a big deal. So there's definitely going to be some spicy uh, spicy uh, discussion about this. But I still think it's really important to do because, um, you know, if, if, if uh, Visionary Realms is going to implement Cash Shop, um, you know, if that is going to be the case, then maybe we can all come together and give them some ideas on what we want to see in there if this would ever happen. Um, you know, what we would kind of be fine with. And so let me just talk a bit about it. I have not wrote anything down. That's how, how I do most of my videos. I just talk out of my ass. That's just who I am. That's just what I do. And um, so let's get straight into it. Now, what I hear the most when people talk about cash up in the game is something that I don't really understand. Because a lot of people in, in forums and like discussions on Reddit started talking about like how a, a cash up is like needed to survive for a game, right? I am uh, really not sure where this comes from because I don't think that is true at all. I don't think that a cash up is going to decide if the game decides or not, right? I really think that is just bullshit and um, I, I, don't, I, I, I do not understand that for a second. Um, however, it also always depends on how the game launches, right? If you look at Pantheon Rise of the Fallen, then it's going to be a smaller game as we expect. Because it's probably not going to be the next WoW killer. It is a very unique and niche kind of game, what most people would say. So we can expect that, you know, it's not going to be like WoW where it gets like 15 million subscribers or something. However, the game is starting with a box price, right? Which is a good entry for the game. And then we have the monthly sub, which I don't know how much that will be. I don't know if we talked about that. Um, I actually like how he's booking up, putting on different armor here while I do a video about cash shop. It's really fitting. Um, however, um, what I was trying to say is that if you look at, look, look, look at it uh, in that way, right? There's a monthly sub in Pantheon, which will be probably around 15 to $20 a month. That is a lot of money for every month, if you think about it, right? And just by knowing that th you're going to have this for sure, it's already a really solid base, right? Sure, you can say it's not going to be that many players, so therefore it's not that crazy, that, that big of an amount. But I still think that a, a, a sub uh, per month is, is, is a really good base for the game. Now, if we talk about cash ups now, right? What would be the negatives of having cash ups? A lot of people think there's no negatives to it. A lot of people think, oh, it's not a big deal. It's just cosmetics. But the problem is you're walking a very fine line when you say it's just cosmetics. I think it depends on what game you kind of want to do, right? Because if you look at, for example, Guild Wars, man, that's all about cosmetics. Guild Wars is a cosmetic game to the core. It is cosmetics all the way. And I still think I'm having a lot of fun right now to play it, right? But if we look at what Pantheon is, Pantheon is getting a bit less lean way here. And the reason for that is because Pantheon wants to be one of this old school, hardcore values MMORPG that we have not seen nowadays, right? It wants to be a very unique game where everything matters, everything is hard, everything is dangerous. You know, that, that where it just feels like really immersive. And, and and I just feel like, especially for a game like this, a cash up with like skins, which is not fit in there. I don't see it fitting into this game at all. Like, so you have this really hardcore kind of game, group oriented focus where you go and do like not necessarily dungeons because I think they don't want to have instance dungeons, but you go like into a into an area with a lot of enemies. They drop armor. You see like an armor that looks a bit different than what you used so far, and you're like, God, yes, I look a bit different than before. You know, I got a bit a, a bit more of a powerful item that like, I put on, and I look different. It, it doesn't look insanely flashy, but it looks kind of kind of good, right? It makes you feel good. And then you have a cash shop on the side where you can buy armor. Like, it's just not going to fit with this game at all. Because keep in mind, if you put in a cash shop with skins, they are going to make insanely good looking skins for the cash shop. Why? Because people wouldn't buy them otherwise, right? So what that means, you have like this guy who goes out there into this cave, fighting, trying to get armor, trying to, you know, you know to do all the content, put his time in, in there. And he's getting some shady looking ass armor that looks just very mediocre. And then there's like this other guy in the city that hasn't even been to that area that just bought the outfit in the cash shop. Like, I don't know how you guys feel about this shirt. It's just cosmetics. But that breaks my immersion. It really does. Like, 
I play this game because I want to be immersed in a different world. I want to escape from reality for a little bit. I want to have this new world that I can live in. Keep in mind, like, like they, they used to say, or Brad McQuaid used to say, he's building worlds, not games, right? You want to have a game where maybe we just log in to hang around. Maybe we just log in to chat with people. It should be one of those games that we don't just play like two or three hours a day. It should be a world that we can live in and dive in and, and, and be really immersed in it. And I just feel like that this would take a big point away from the, uh, from the game itself. That's just my opinion. And it was kind of funny. There were some people on Reddit who wrote like, Dude, it's just a hack. It's just a, a, a cosmetic hack. What's your problem? But that's exactly what I'm talking about. Like, I feel like that would break immersion in this game. Um, maybe I'm looking at it too dark and too grim. But I really feel like it would not be a good thing for Pantheon. That's just my personal opinion. Now, and always keep in mind, if we start having a cash up, which I'm going to be honest, like, I would be surprised if there is no cash up. Because nowadays, this is one of those easy ways for big corporations to make money, right? It's just cosmetics. No big deal. No pay to win. So they just put it in without thinking about it because it's a good money maker. Um, so it's, it's just really hard. And for me, the hardest thing to kind of think about is, sure, it's just a hat now, right? But... Once you open that gate, once you open that that shop where there's just a hat in there for now, what else is gonna follow, right? They're gonna think about that. They're gonna work on those things. There's gonna be new skins. There's gonna be a lot of different skins. There's gonna be a lot of maybe mounts coming out, mounts with skins. You know, the, 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 the possibilities are unlimited there, which is a good thing for the company, but for us, it would just water down this game more and more and more and i feel like it's really dangerous to just even open that gate now if we look at it from a different perspective right it's the fact that what if you what if pantheon is going to be the game that we want it to be right good cool but what if you want to support the game even further now what if i say god dang it man this is a game that we haven't seen e seen in years this is a game that we that we have been waiting for for so long and it's really all that we that we were promised right how do I put more money into the game? Because I want to support them. I have a full-time job, right? If they do stuff that I like, if I see that they are really trying hard, I want to invest money into that game. I want to give them some more support. So there should definitely be a way so we could do that, right? There, maybe there's people out there who are like millionaires, right? They're playing this game. And they want to start... They want to give Pantheon the money that, they, that it deserves. So there definitely has to be a way on how we should do that but like it's like i'm not getting paid to think about that stuff so i have no ideas on how um we could do that but i i figured that's that's their job to find out right that if there is a cash shop maybe there could be a smart way or there could be a smart way where we could um introduce a cash shop without us destroying a lot of community aspects uh, i want to go into that in a second um, maybe there's some really smart ways where it does not really break immersion and it is not pay to win. Maybe there's somewhere, some something in there between, right? Maybe. I don't know. Um, but that's on them to figure this out that they want to have a cash up. Because I feel like if people want to pump money in this game, they should be able to do so, right? Um, so there's definitely something that we got to do. Now, let's come back to the fact of what I just said about the breaking community uh breaking the community if there's like stuff like skins in there now if we look at many other games pretty much any mmorpg nowadays there's always a shop in there that's just a given that's just a given it's literally in every single mmorpg so just for us to not have it in this game would be like insane thinking in my opinion right because just look at any other mmorpg there's always a shop in there there's really 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 aggressive shops in certain games like wow where you can obtain mounts not just skins for mounts unique mounts that you cannot obtain in the game itself and that you cannot get with any other currency just with real life cash and there's a then there's like guild wars where they don't sell you as far as i know i'm new to guild wars but as far as i heard you cannot buy unique mounts in there you can buy mounts uh, mount skins with stuff but as far as i know you can also get that currency in the game so it's a bit of a a different kind of system um, but the reason I said about the, the thing about community breaking, um, in a lot of MMORPGs, and I mainly talk about WoW when I say that, you guys know this by now, because I've played this game for 10 years. It is a game where you could name change 
with ten dollars. You can raise change with twenty dollars. You can serve a change with thirty dollars. Right? That's all stuff that you think. Well, what's the big deal if someone wants to change the server? What's the big deal if someone wants to change their name? But at the same time, this is already something that waters down the community. Think about it. What happened when? Back in Vanilla, when you were playing WoW Vanilla, you had your own server. For example, Anubarak, that was my first server. Everyone that was on their server was bound to that server. There were no server transfers back then. And what that did is actually something quite beautiful. Because what happened is that it was like its own world. The server was its own world. No one could escape this one or go on a different one. You were bound to that world. What that means is that you started to know people like that have certain professions. Hey, this is Mike. This guy is the, is the, best, the best smith on the server. Oh, this is this guy. He's the best this and this on the server. You started to get to know people. Like in a small town city. You start to know who, who, is, who is who really, right? And that is something that no one really pays a lot of attention to for some reason. Or no, no one ever mentions. But that's a big key to like an immersive MMORPG. So what happened with the server trans is people started flocking away. New people came to the server. And then with like all this overlapping servers. You don't know... Who is who anymore? You don't know. Oh, well, that's just a different guy over there, right? And that is something that is a very, very cool thing that sadly no one ever mentions, uh, which which WoW had back in the day, which was super cool. You knew people on your server. Um, and, and that's something that server changes would change. Let's, let's go with a name change. Um, you have a reputation on your server. If your name is Joppa, for example, people know you as Joppa, right? You're this guy, you... They know you maybe maybe have good memories of you, maybe they have bad memories of you. But you are Joppa, there's no way for you to change it, right? And, and with a name change, you just change your name, just change your server, boom, you, you're, you're back, you have a new identity, and we go again, you know? And it, it's just something that if I would make an MRPG, I had no name change and no server change, right? If someone wants to start on a different server, good for you, man. Make a new character, right? So... But then again, that's not where we are right now. Right now, it's way easier to be like, oh, you want to change the server? Well, you know, just pay us $20 and you can do that. And I just feel like it, it never really got told what the what the positives are of like not having server change. What what, what the positives are of not having name change and uh, all that kind of stuff, which kind of makes me sad because I feel like it still has a big... It plays a big part in an MRPG that people don't like to mention because it is so easy monetizable. Monetizable is that a word? Well, it is now. So, you know, we can talk about it all day, every day. Um, I, I can see where people come from if they are like, "Oh, it's just a hat. It just it's just a robe, dude. What's your problem?" But you have to think further down the line, right? It's not just a hat. That story is not just going to have a hat, okay? It's going to have probably multiple pages, multiple sites, a lot of different things. And I feel like if we want to like help Visionary Realms, not having a cash, cash up at all would even be actually asked a lot of them. Because nowadays that's just not the case. Like everyone has a cash up in every game. Sometimes more egregious, sometimes not. But like just having no cash up at all, I would be super surprised if that's going to be the case. But you know, if we get one, maybe let me know in the comments down below, what could we put in there? What Could there be some smart, usable items that maybe... But then again, like, it, an item should be something you obtain by doing special things. What could we put in there besides skins? Besides stuff that we would like to get inside the game by doing stuff, right? Uh, maybe we should really start thinking about that. And But then again, you know, maybe... Maybe I, I, I think that uh, Visionary Realms has their priorities right because, um, you know, they turned down offers. They turned down full funding offers from from uh, from probably big companies uh, because they wanted to retain the control of the game. And it just brings me a bit back to Blizzard, what old Blizzard was, you know, before they lost uh, before they lost um, all, the, all the saying in the company. And I just hope that Vis Visionary Realms is not going down the same way. Because we could see that by uh, this this guy from Blizzard, um, Mike Morheim, who retired from Blizzard. Everyone thought, well, he's retiring. Well, guess what? He's building another company, right? And um, he actually mentioned somewhere in the forum post that, you know, he wants to keep control over the, comp the, the company, right? And um, I just hope that they never lose that, you know? Because once that happens, there's a lot of other things that roll in. And, uh, you know, we'll see. Let me know in the comments down below. It's a very spicy theme. If you want to dislike the video, just go ahead and dislike it. I don't really, I don't really mind. If you like the video, like it. Uh, I'm just kind of here to kind of spark the discussion because I feel like if there's going to be a cash shop, we might as well help each other by 
by telling Visionary Realms what we would like to see in there. Maybe some of us have, like, great ideas in that regard, right? People get paid for those ideas, guys. So, you know. So, thanks for watching. Have a good one. I'll see you guys on my stream if you guys want to visit me up here. I'm uh, streaming pretty much every day. I'm playing a lot of Guild Wars right now, which is definitely a lot different than Pantheon is going to be. But I'm still having a lot of fun right now playing with uh, friends that I met and stuff. So, yeah. Thank you so much for watching, guys. i see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.